I was in no rush, so I ended up going to USPS.com and searching for the military care kit. It was completely free. All I needed to do was make a USPS account. As far as I know, they don't offer this in local post offices, so if you are in a rush, um, I would suggest you go ahead and just buy it from your local post office. But if you're not, you can get some free boxes online and it comes with tapes and labels and it makes your first shipping experience very easy. So looking at the large flat rate box, it is a foot in both width and height and in depth, it is um, almost half a foot, so 5.5 inches. I'll go ahead and put a permanent marker next to it so you can see on how deep it is. Um, it's fairly shallow, but it's enough to put some snacks and make your military members day. Addressing your package is fairly easy. Just make sure you fill in the slots with the right information. Obviously include their full name because um, there are soldiers who have the same name. Having their rank is optional, so if you don't know it, it's okay. And their unit number and box number is the most important part. Please make sure you get these numbers from your military member. It is different from everyone. And the rectangular boxes at the bottom, please fill them out with the, their right zip code and their right information. In this corner over here is where you'll put your return address if you are shipping domestically. If you're shipping internationally, here's where it gets a little tricky. You will need to fill out a customs form. If you don't feel comfortable doing the customs form online like I'm showing you here or you don't have a printer, go ahead and go to your local post office. They'll happily provide you with the paper to fill out. Um, while you're doing it online, just make sure that you have the country in the United States so you can get domestic rates. If you don't, it, you're going to get really pricey rates. Make sure you put the soldier's full name. Their unit number and box number goes under street address. Any extraneous information if you want, you can add at the bottom, like their building or battalion. Then in the city, you're going to put whether they're APO, FPO, or DPO. Their state is where you're going to put if they're A, AP, and their zip code that they are in. Your shipping date is basically when you're going to bring it to the USPS office to have it shipped. Make sure you put your shipping flat rate so you can get one price. I put 50 because um, that's how much the insurance covers. Then when you're ready, you choose the package you have. I put priority mail, large flat rate, and I continue on to the actual customs information. So I usually put gifts and I put in my description that it's a care package. Then in my detailed description, I put like, um, let's say I got a box, a bag of chocolates. You can put chocolate. Um, it's valued up to $3. I only have one of those. And then you can estimate the weight. They check it in the post office anyways, as long as it doesn't um, go over 70. So I usually estimate, then I have them weigh it to make sure that it doesn't go over 70 and then they allow me to send it off. Um, the most important part would be that you go ahead and put the AES exemption. The most common two would be having a package valued under 2,500 or having it being its final destination being a um, APO, FPO, or DPO address. Any snacks that they can't get from their PX exchange, which is like a little store for military members there, um, I go ahead and put those snacks in here. Anything that can spill, I wrap it up in saran wrap and I wrap it up in a Ziploc bag so if it spills, it spills within itself and doesn't ruin any of my other package contents. contents? <laughs> and I go ahead and include a letter to make my military members day. If you find a way to reduce the plastic in this whole thing, please let me know. I think it's a little too much, but... You know. Before you send your package, please double check on country restrictions. Each country has their own set of restrictions. You can find a list of each restricted item within USPS. Just do a quick Google search on that. If you do end up sending something that's country restricted, your package is going to get sent back to you and you might even get charged for it. Before you seal it off, go ahead and close the box and shake it. If it shakes, it's gonna break while in transit, so just make sure you fix it up in a way where it won't shake. <laughs> and you can add packaging peanuts or even more decorations or more items if need be. This is to ensure that if your package gets lost, it finds its way back to you or to the receiver. Instead of just taping the regular sides you would tape, go ahead and tape the corners, the edges, anything that's opened, just to reinforce it against the weather or any spillage. The last three are to make your military member happy if they've gone non, no contact or they just had a long day of training. You want to go ahead and find a way to brighten their day when you're away. 
After you're done, this is how your package should look like. Nicely packed with everything inside, all the goodies. You can even decorate the flaps of the box as long as none of the decorations are on the outside and you keep it on the inside. Alrighty, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And enjoy sending care packages. Ciao! I have no idea why I said ciao. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>